Learning outcomes. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the procedures of evidence management, do's and do nots while submitting evidence to lab for examination and the maintenance of chain of custody. Dear student, let us start with evidence collection. The investigator needs to make it sure that evidence must be collected in a systematic and careful manner. The process of evidence collection begins with the preliminary crime scene survey walkthrough followed by a determination of the evidence collection sequence to be used. There are various methods which can be adopted for the evidence collection based on the type of crime scene. The evidence collection sequence may be based on many informations such as the scene location where the crime has occurred, inside premises or within a vehicle or it is an exterior one, the condition of the evidence whether the evidence is fragile or stable plays an important role in choosing which evidence collection method is to be used, whether condition which might affect the scene or evidence within. Then the last one is scene management considerations which may alter or contaminate the evidence. Investigators should use the appropriate equipments when collecting evidence. Equipments that are required for collection of evidences must be sterile so as to avoid contamination of evidence. Various equipments are used to collect evidence. Few of them are latex gloves, nitrile gloves, helps in preventing contamination as well as any kind of hazardous exposure to the hands of personal collecting evidence. Second is forceps. Forceps and similar tools may have to be used to pick up small items. Third is tweezers, scalpels, swabs, paper bags, plastic bags, cardboard boxes, wrapping paper, hand tools and the last one would be thermometer. Now let us see evidence marking and packaging. Evidence collected from the scene of crime or received during the investigation of crime scene should be catalogued and packaged before leaving the scene to prevent loss or cross-contamination. Mark the item of evidence when possible. Evidence which cannot be marked such as soil, hair and stains should be placed in an appropriate container or envelope. An important point that is to be kept in mind is that the evidence marked directly might result in interference with the forensic analysis and hence marking should always be done on outer packaging. When marking evidences directly include case number, item number, data recovered or received, investigators initials. Now evidence that has been inventorized marked and prepared for submittal is packaged in an appropriate container and labeled as per agency protocol. A trained investigator or evidence collector arrives at the crime scene with the all type of packaging materials and tools ready to encounter any type of situation. In order to prevent any change in evidence, the evidence must be packaged carefully. The type of packaging depends on the type of evidence. The evidence must be properly packaged, properly labeled and sealed with appropriate initials to maintain chain of custody. The evidence must be packaged in its original condition as it is found at the crime scene. The objects with the trace evidence must be sent as whole until unless it is not possible to transport the whole item such as wall. As sometimes it takes a long time for a crime lab to process the evidence, so it is necessary that the evidence must be packaged in such a manner that the conditions such as evaporation, breakage, etc. 
should not change its condition. While packaging, the chances of cross-contamination must be ended. Each item must be packaged in separate containers. Every package must be labeled with all the essential details such as case FIR number, item number, type of evidence, fragile or stable, etc. After labeling the package, must be sealed with evidence tape. Take entire piece of evidence as it is found on the crime scene if possible. New and unused packaging materials should be used. Evidence must be sealed using proper methods which prevent tampering. For powders such as drugs and other ordinary mailing envelopes should not be used because powders will leak out of their corners. Now let us see unbreakable plastic pill bottles with pressure lids or in manila and envelopes, screw cap glass vial or cardboard pill boxes used to store trace evidences such as hair, glass fibers, etc. Paper bags and boxes are used to pack larger or heavier pieces of evidence. Clean paint cans are used to store arson evidences. Paper bags or manila envelopes are used to store blood stain material, clothing after drying. Then comes airtight containers. These containers are used to store blood soaked clothing because the trapped moisture may cause the growth of mild dew and mold and destroy the blood. Charred clothing or debris on the contrary to avoid evaporation of volatile petroleum residues. Then comes druggist fold. You see druggist fold is used to package small amounts of trace evidences. Now let us see brown paper bags of appropriate size. Earth guard bags and butcher paper that can be folded and properly taped shut are used to store damp or bloody items. Then non-porous containers such as paper or cardboard are used to store any items with residual moisture or bodily fluids which should be thoroughly air dried and then packaged so as to prevent the destruction of DNA by bacteria, mold, etc. Then comes glass bottle with tight fitting lid which is used to place flammable liquids and the last one would be screw cap jar or vial which is used to place liquids or solid. Now dear students let us see chain of custody in detail. After careful collection of the evidence, the next step of the investigator is to submit evidence in the lab for examination. In the whole process, the maintenance of chain of custody is very important. The transfer of property or evidence from a crime scene investigator to any other individual agency or location is documented by having a chain of custody. The list of information that is to be included in the chain of custody goes on something like this. Number one, list of evidence, the item, number and brief description. Number two, all transfers must include the date and time of the transfer. Number three, the signature of the individual releasing the evidence to another individual or location. Number four, the signature of individual transporting the evidence. Number five, the signature of the individual receiving the evidence from another individual or location. And the last one would be reason for the transfer as needed. Now, after all the collected evidences have been packaged properly, they should be properly labeled. After labeling, the next step is to transport all the packaged evidences to the crime lab for forensic analysis or for further evaluation. The chain of custody is a tracking document beginning with detailed scene notes that document where the evidence was received from or collected. The chain of custody is initially established when an investigator takes custody of evidence at a crime scene or 
when evidence is received from an officer or detective at or from the crime scene. In order to maintain all items, a complete and correct chain of custody must be maintained for all items. Notes should be prepared which comprises of documentation of recovery, location, the date and time of recovery, and also the description of items, condition, and whether any unusual markings or alteration to the item was present during the recovery. It is not necessary that the evidence collector only will transport the evidence to the lab. Often, some other officer transports the evidence to the lab. That's why maintenance of chain of custody log must be maintained indicating the transfer of custody to and from every individual who is involved in transporting or storing the evidence until it gets to the crime lab. Now, these includes the collecting officer who collects the evidence from crime scene, the transportation officer who transports the collected and packaged evidence from crime scene to the lab. Any evidence storage officer if the evidence is stored prior to taking it to the lab. Any further transportation officer, anyone who gets into the evidence for any reason. The lab evidence collection person or persons, any other person involved in the whole process and lastly send all evidence registered or certified mail return received requested and maintain the chain of custody now let us discuss transfer of evidence to property room on many occasions the agencies transfers the evidence to a property room a form mentioned to its submission in a crime lab property room documentation or secure electronic transfer is used when the investigator submits evidence to the property room. The associated information may include agency case number, type of evidence, officer responsible for the investigation, the name, rank, identification of the officer for whom the evidence was recovered. The official lab report is addressed to this officer. Transporting officer, the name, rank, identification number and assignment of the investigator. Signature or other identifier of responsible officer and date prepared. The date the evidence is submitted to the property room. And lastly, comment. The address where the incident was located or where the evidence was recovered. The list of evidence or property may include number each evidence item sequentially. Quantity of item included, example, 10 spent shell casings. Serial numbers of the items, example, VCR or handgun. Item description. Then status, for example, submit for analysis, hold or RTC, which means releasable, return to claimant or owner. Now, dear students, let us summarize this chapter. The evidence collection sequence may be based on the scene location, the condition of the evidence, weather conditions, etc. Secondly, collection equipment that may come into contact with evidence should be sterile to avoid contamination of evidence. Then in this chapter we have learned that we should always mark all the item of evidence which must include case number, item number, data recovered or received and investigators initials and then we have learned that evidence that has been inventoried, marked and prepared for submission is packaged in an appropriate container and labeled per agency protocol. Then after reading this chapter we have come to know that the evidence must be packaged in its original condition as it was found at the crime scene. Then the objects with the trace evidence must be sent as whole until and unless it is not possible to transport the whole item such as wall. 
and we have learned in this chapter that the evidence should be packaged in such a manner that it should not lose its potential information it is having due to the factors such as evaporation, breakage, etc. After labeling the package, must be sealed with evidence tape. Residues must be stored in airtight containers. Druggist folds is used to package small amounts of trace evidences. Glass bottle with tight fitting lid is used to place flammable liquids. Screw cap, jar or vial is used to place liquid or solids. Then the chain of custody documents the transfer of evidence property from an investigator to another individual location or agency. We have also learned the reason for the transfer as needed must be covered in chain of custody. The chain of custody is initially established when an investigator takes custody of evidence at a crime scene or when evidence is received from an officer or detective at or from the crime scene. The notes must be taken including documenting the recovery location, the time and the date recovered or received, description of the item, condition of the item and any unusual markings or alterations to the item. And lastly, we have learned from this chapter that a log must be maintained 